Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Health and Hope Week 19. And tonight we are going to be covering Element 17, uh, becoming a perpetual motion machine. Sounds cool, right? Doesn't that what we want to do? Okay. Well, we're going to talk about that uh, in just a little bit. Uh, I did want to just take a few minutes, though, to share a little bit about um, what we're doing as a community. And I, I want to just kind of bring this up every once in a while. And a lot of this started way back in the beginning when Shelly and I started talking. And she's an idea person. And she had all kinds of ideas about how we were going to make this, you know, a community-wide impact. And, um, you know, I continue to think about the community and the people in this area that we love and care about. And, um, and I know that many, many, many people need um, to know about this program. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's two things that we're looking for. Um, one is, is more coaches. And I know most of you in the room, we've already had a little bit of the conversation. Some of you are kind of thinking about it and whatever. Um, but I'm kind of changing my kind of perspective on how I'm presenting that. Um, we're really looking to build a team. And I'm looking for other people to be on our team. And, and there's a way to make some money being on the team, and that's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. But if you are interested in that, or maybe you know somebody, maybe you know somebody um, that cares about health, um, maybe they're somebody who would need to lose weight, maybe they're not. Um, maybe they're just somebody that would be interested in doing what I do. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. They don't have to get up front and do teachings like this. Um, this is something that's unique to my coaching. Um, other coaches don't do this. Um, mostly what it takes is simply reaching out sharing your story um, or sharing other people's story, um, making people aware of what we're doing, and then just giving people an opportunity to become a part of it. So, um, and then of course, once people become a part of it, you walk the path with them and you help them and you encourage them and you support them and you get them connected and uh, all of those kinds of things. So, if you're interested or you know of somebody who's interested, please let me know. Um, and uh, I would love to share this opportunity with anybody. Um, and somebody mentioned tonight, a couple of you mentioned, um, you know, part of what we would like to do is even make this uh, the kind of thing where people all over the community would know about it, um, where we could even influence some of the restaurants to carry lean and green options on their menu and, um, and have different events and different things going on. Um, so now uh, here's one more thing, one more idea that I want to, this is the second thing, one more idea. Um, and this is something that um, I hope this is okay if I tell everybody, Trish. Um, <laughs> Trish and Mylan are going to be doing. Um, they have joined on as coaches, so we can give them a hand. They've joined the team. If we can do it, we can do it. That is true. So one of the things to keep in mind is that there's different ways to do this. You don't, again, you don't have to do it the way that I do it. Um, I do a lot of stuff on Facebook. They're just not on Facebook that much. So one of the things that we're planning for them is, uh, is a, a health and hope in the home kind of event. And it's going to be, uh, everybody remembers the old Tupperware parties, right? <laughs> right? You just, you just invite a whole bunch of your friends over and let's just get together and we'll just, you know, in my living room, do a couple lean and green recipes, share some stories, present what this is. And so maybe you would be more interested in doing something like that. Maybe you're thinking, well, I don't necessarily want to bring everybody here on Monday nights, or maybe my friend wouldn't necessarily be comfortable here on Monday nights, but I could probably get 15 or 20 people to show up to my house, and we could just take a look at this thing. So those are some ideas, some different things that we're doing, and um, wanted to keep you in, in the loop with all of that. Um, but now I want to ask my... My hype woman, Jerry, come on up. Woman. Right. That's you. I, I know that was really cheesy. Don't let that reflect bad on Jerry. But. High five, man. That's what I'm talking about. The pressure. The hype. Oh, my. And I'm like so low energy today. I was telling my husband on the way here, I said, it just feels so blah. That's good. You know? But then did you notice we came through these doors and we saw friendship and we saw each other and yeah. did did we not see smiles? And then with yep. Mr. Hype Man, I mean, I think I'm getting energized. So that's a good thing. Well, I'm glad you're here. We're glad to be here. And tonight's topic, I picked commitment. 
Uh-oh. Oh, God, see? Uh -oh. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, when I was thinking about commitment, I yo-yoed. So when I'm sharing with you this evening, you're going to see me yo-yo <coughs> because I have very mixed feelings about the word commitment. And as you saw, a tree, what was her reaction right there? <laughs> Wasn't that almost like, oh boy, we're scared oh, of the word too. commitment, you know? <laughs> and you know, deep down on a lot of things, I'm when you have to commit to something, I have that feeling too of reserve and reservation. So I, as, I, as I often do, I go to the dictionary and I like to see what the dictionary has to say and I like to play off of that a little bit. And I noticed that when some things were in good vibration with me and some things were not in good vibe with me, okay? And that might be with you. But how many of you think of the word commitment as a positive word? We'll start off like that. You find it to be positive, okay? Now, in positivity, like for commitment, like relationship, marriage, I thought of commitment, oh, I can do that, because my heart was involved, you know, and I could commit to that, and I could commit to that person. That one didn't scare me. Uh, maybe we have a commitment to our faith, and that's another one that I'm all in on. What's another kind of uh, area in our life that we have commitments in? To our children. Work. Responsibility. Okay, and work. That's a big area, right? Of work. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's where I'm going to get up tricky on you. <laughs> what about commitment to self? Oh, this gets pushed to the wayside a lot. Okay, Tracy yeah, just said that, that gets pushed to the wayside a lot. That's what I'm saying. Uh-oh, about it. <laughs> Dot shaking her head. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So commitment to self, we kind of like, that's, that's like, oh no, right? Yeah, and I was again. doing that too. <laughs> still. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Still. Um, so with the word commitment and with our program and with our dedication to each other and wanting to support each other, you know, we're going to have to sit there and look into ourselves and really be honest because if we want the most out of this like when you take on your new roles as coach mm -hmm. that means you are committing yourself to this and you're going to commit to learning and you're going to commit to do what it takes to be um, enjoying mm -hmm. what you've signed up for right? right enjoy the process enjoy the journey and sometimes would you think that maybe we forget to ask ourselves, it's okay to enjoy the journey? Or do you have to come out running and be Mr. Perfection? <laughs> Mylan is Mr. Perfection, right off the, get, uh, off the bat, you know? I gotta tell you something, I'm a firstborn. Are you a firstborn, child? No. Oh, number two. Firstborn, I had to be Miss Little Miss Perfect, oh, everything yeah. about it, you know? <laughs> and I was reared that way, and boy, it was really a hard role to have to go Stop after. Me. And I remember being afraid to try new things because of that perfection. If I didn't know how to do it already, I wasn't going to begin it. Um, I remember crying about going to kindergarten. I can't go to kindergarten. Well, why can't you go to kindergarten? Because I don't know what I'm supposed to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that is a real heavy thing on a little five-year-old, right? I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> so perfection, you know. So it was college when I said to myself, I'm going to give myself permission to make mistakes. And I started living, okay? Because I didn't have to be the best when I started having, you know, to go out and try something new. Okay, so I don't know, maybe perfectionism should have been a topic. <laughs> but now back to commitment, please. All right, I want to go right here. What motivates commitment? What do you think? What motivates a goal? Success. 
Success is a motivator for some. Mm -hmm. Nodding your head. Things and wants and needs. That's mm. that's a big motivator. <laughs> Sometimes fear. If there's a mm. you know true. a looming uh, disease issue, yeah. illness. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's mm. true. <clears throat> Lynn, you're quiet. <laughs> Could you practice on him? Come on. <laughs> okay, what motivates commitment? It is fueled by desire for engaging in a behavior to achieve goals. Mm -hmm. Commitment goes beyond desire. It is dedication to following through with behaviors and actions that will lead to the accomplishment of that goal. Thus, motivation is an intrinsic drive, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so if it's intrinsic and we find out that we have to be the motivator behind that desire, right? To get to where we're committed, how do you sit there and fuel that desire? Have you ever thought about that? Some people do it through prayer. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of that lately. I and do it right yep. from another meeting, this meeting. Okay, so your commitment. Mm -hmm. That's one of, uh, that is a perfect way to be committed to something. Mm -hmm. By attending and, and going forward. Okay, how do we stay committed to following our plans? Mm -hmm. what, what, what is it? Now, Mylon, when he was working with us in our beginnings, you know, he, he asked us, you know, what, what do you want out of this? What, what, what are your goals? Mm -hmm. And he says, because sometimes I'm going to sit there and, and reach into that bag and bring it up to remind you if you're having a hard time and you feel yourself not really getting into the program or, or putting your brakes on or doing whatever it is, like maybe a form of rebellion, well, if you're not committed, you set yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not totally committed in something, you're not really 100% into it. That's a really good answer, Lynn. Mm -hmm. That's too good. big a gray area in there. Yeah. Okay. Then why do we cheat? When it's easy, we're committed. But that's a, that's, that's stuck, good. Then you start exactly. putting the on. Exactly. Yeah. Fleshly yeah. desires pull us away. That's a good one, Mylon. Fleshly desires. That's a fact. Yeah. So, what I would like to ask is, you know, for us to consider, I know this is one of the things that I've done for myself in overcoming some some hurdles in my, my life. And the hurdles, like one would be like, let's say, procrastination, okay? I was always that, that person that waited to the last minute, you know? And so it was just like, what was my act of self-love? What could I do to change that, right? Love myself more and get it done early so I could take the pressure off and feel good. Do you love yourself that much? Do you, Terry? Do you? Do you? Tracy, do you love yourself? Been there, and the answer is no. See? <laughs> so I think, you know, when we're doing our self-talk, and that's it's honest, different. Tracy, when it's, when, it's, when it's us by yourself, your self-talk, you got to start being aware of it and saying, I am worth it. I am worth this commitment. I can make a commitment to me. I don't have to make it to everybody else and think I'm going to let, let anybody down. But this could be our, my little thing that I, I do for me. Right. It could be my thing about my self-love, my self-actualization, my opportunity to love myself in the form of commitment to make something that I really desire because that's what's behind commitment is desire, right? Yeah. So if I can do that, I will be, what's the end goal? Successful. One of them, right? So I'm just saying I think we really need to look at ourselves in that and ask myself, how committed to me am I? 
you know? <coughs> you don't have to be committed to, you know, your partner. You don't have to be committed, even have that much of a commitment to myelin if you don't want to. But if you don't have it with yourself first, who are you fooling? I think it kind of even takes it down another label, another level to people that are like that because they're very codependent in their behaviors and they're really out of touch with what works for them because of the codependency on other people. So getting back in touch with yourself is hard for a lot of people that have codependent tendencies. Oh boy, we're going deep. <laughs> Shelly, you know, that that's really, that's, that, that is true. That's true. And if we have somebody that's codependent in nature prior to, to making a commitment like this, they could be, um, have some difficulty. So baby steps, right? Okay. And baby steps though is that I would, I would try to sit there and influence somebody to sit there and say, I'm doing this for me. This is me. This is for me because I am trying to improve me and be happy with me and like me and love me and, and change me or accept me. That's also something. All right. Well, enough. Anybody else have anything they want to add to commitment and come up here and do their thing? Come on. Shall we? You're a hard act to follow. I thought of something like as a follow-up to what you said because when we put ourselves first sometimes people feel very guilty about doing that so a challenge um, when we take things home from the meetings little tricks and little sayings and little things that really inspire us to keep on that path one of the things that is a challenge to most people not just here making a commitment to your health is looking at the commitment of yourself in the mirror every day and facing that yourself in the mirror and encouraging yourself and loving yourself by looking in the mirror and saying, you know, I really love you. I love who you are. I accept who you are. And you'd be surprised how many people have a struggle and a hard time to do that. So before I think we can make a commitment, we gotta fall back in love with ourselves because we've been on the other side of that and doing so many things for so many other people that we got lost along the way. So we need to take this opportunity to rediscover ourselves and make ourselves very healthy, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually as well. Well said. Well, you're a tough act to follow. Good work. Oh, that, good was good. Good. that was good. That was good. That was good. Terry, that was awfully good too. Really Thank good. you. <laughs> okay, now now you really got tough acts to follow. I know. I don't. Have, I don't have anything. Let's all just go home. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know me better than that. <laughs> well, you made it green, so we'll, well thank you. Thank you. Really I just want to kick one other thing into that. Shelly and Terry, making ourselves, uh, following the right steps to make ourselves better is not being selfish because if we have the desire to make, to do that so we can make other people better. So that's the desire to help yourself further. If we're not positive, confident in ourselves, we can't help other people. That's right. Like on the airplane, the air masks fall down, they say, New Year's first. Yep. Yeah. Or you help somebody else. Yeah. All right. Never heard of that. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I want to take us back a ways um, to, I think it was week two. Um, we talked about the micro habits and the macro habits. Does anybody remember what the six macro habits were? Or maybe uh, all together, the six, uh, we could come up with the six between us all. Now, some of you weren't even with us back then. Uh, only a handful of you were. So, the macro habits. And look at you guys. Look at through your books. <laughs> and like, we're cheating. And we don't even care. It's <laughs> like Element two. No, that's fine. No, that's fine. What's that? No, go ahead. I said I took on my tongue, but I can't even remember. No. Element two. There were six symbols. Six big oh, yeah. categories. Oh, yeah. Those are the macro habits. Exercise and all of these one of them. Movement. Healthy, healthy movement was one. Or healthy motion. Healthy mind. Healthy mind. Healthy surroundings. 
healthy surroundings, healthy weight management, healthy sleep, healthy, management, sleep. healthy sleep, and health, healthy eating. Yeah. Weight management and eating are two different things. Yep. So tonight we're going to talk about that healthy motion. All right. Um, and actually, we'll be talking about this for uh, a couple of different weeks. Now, I want to talk about a little bit of a mind shift that we have to make in our minds, in our approach to our own health. And by the way, all of this stuff is about mind shift stuff. That What you brought tonight, Terry, was fantastic, that commitment. We are so busy sometimes being committed to everybody else around us that we just continue to say no to us. And at the end of the day, then we aren't healthy to help other people. Um, this is another mindset um, shift. And I'm going to start with this statement. You guys should be able to help me finish it. This is not your fault, but it is... Your responsibility, right? So the condition that we find ourselves is not completely our fault, but it is our responsibility. Our culture puts this huge emphasis on comfort. Have you guys noticed that? That is like the number one thing that we chase after. Sometimes if we don't step back and kind of think about, again, we're talking about motivations, motivations, what motivates us, what drives us, what makes us or brings us to the decisions that we make, I think comfort is at the front of that list. Our food is created with comfort in mind, right? So is our way of life, our entertainment, our technology. What is technology doing lately? It's giving us the ability to automate everything. And by automate, what that means is I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is set my computer up or my phone or my gadget, my whatever, to do whatever. And I can just sit back and watch it do the work for me. Right? And yeah, all those things, I'm not, I'm not down in any of that. I automate a whole bunch of stuff in my life. But if we're not careful, it can cause us to get lazy because everything is automated. Uh, in the world that we live in, the good life is viewed as the comfortable life, right? When we think about the good life, what do we think about? We think about the ability to sit back and not do any work, enjoy food and drink, enjoy doing nothing. <laughs> right? And, um, <clears throat> and so <clears throat> we create comfort food, lazy boy chairs, again, automated everything. And, and here's the, the flip side of that coin is not only do we chase after comfort, do we embrace everything that makes us comfortable, but we also resist everything that makes us uncomfortable. Sometimes I hear people say, I, I need to lose weight, but I ain't doing exercise. Well, maybe we should take a little softer approach to that. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe we should just kind of, you know. Okay, maybe not push so hard, right? So in doing so, in doing so, and here's the problem: when we resist discomfort, we make our lives more uncomfortable, and that's what happens. We get to this point where we go, man, I don't like the way I look in the mirror. I don't like the way I feel. I don't like what my doctor's telling me. I don't like this. I'm uncomfortable. Well, that's because we've been resisting some discomforts for a long time. So the mind shift changes. We have to understand that there are certain things in this life that only come through discomfort. Some very, very important things that only come through discomfort. So let's take a look at... Um, Growth comes from discomfort. What's that? Growth. Growth That's comes correct. from discomfort, yes. Yes, growth right. in almost every area requires some journey through discomfort, <laughs> decisions that are uncomfortable. All right, Dr. A says, by making small daily choices, you can win the race of weight management and set the stage for exercise at your own pace. So for that person who says, I ain't exercising, slow your roll a little bit. Let's approach it from a different angle and let's think about this. Let's talk about how do we get to that place where we are embracing the habits of healthy motion, okay? Uh, again, for a lot of people, the idea of exercising is just not attractive. And here's the thing, you can lose weight on this program without doing any exercise. You can lose weight on this program without doing any exercise. People do it all the time. And for, for, for people that need that front door, that's a beautiful thing. But here's what I want you to remember, and here's what I want you to know. You cannot achieve optimum health without exercise. And remember, losing weight is not our big goal. Losing weight, we're not in this to lose something, we're in this to gain something. My premise, or what I want you to gain, is actually really good health. And so we shouldn't be chasing something that we're losing, we should be chasing something that we're gaining. And you can't achieve optimum health without exercise. 
So the Optavia mission, as it's stated, is offer, we offer the world lifelong transformation, one healthy habit at a time. And it takes time to incorporate these new habits. We have to be patient. Uh, we've said many times, it'll take you a year to get through this book um, if, you, if you do it at a decent pace. Um, now, if you're really, really digging and you really want to know everything that's in there, you can go through it faster than that. But we recommend people take about a year to get through that book. So we want you to be patient with yourself, we want you to be patient with the process, but we do have to also be intentional. And we can't be impatient without being intentional, that's just lazy and procrastinating. <laughs> so, all right, so there's two reasons that now is a really great time to begin working on this habit of motions, increasing your motion. The first one is this, um, that a lot of times increasing your motion or adding motion into your life is a way to counter a plateau um, because there's plateaus or tendency in your weight loss journey, okay? So here's one of the things that I've discovered um, along the way as I've been coaching people is that a lot of times our body, what our body wants to do is our body wants to adjust to whatever environment we're in. If we create an environment where we're living on a thousand calories or less a day, our body wants to adjust to that. Now, it doesn't mean that our body's gonna perform perfectly, it just adjusts to that weight. No, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take that energy from somewhere else. It's gonna take the energy from somewhere, but our body will adjust in ways so that we can uh, live or survive or uh, uh, process, we can do life on less than a thousand calories a day, but um, it's gonna take it from somewhere else. So we have to recognize um, that our body will do whatever it can to, to preserve our fat reserves. It really wants to. It wants to hang on to that fat um, for whatever reason. <laughs> and so it'll find a way to make the change, right? So if we introduce and increase our exercise, it'll motivate our body to continue to use its fat reserves. And that's really what we want to do. So a lot of times increasing or just changing our exercise can cause our body to kind of snap out of it and start to start to lose weight again. Uh, the second reason is what I call the snowball effect. And this is something that I uh, experienced firsthand. It was something that surprised me, like a pleasant surprise. It was really great. Um, because when transforming your nutrition to lose weight, you will first of all feel better, right? Most of you have experienced that. You're like, wow, I just feel better, right? It'll increase your energy and decrease your sluggishness. It'll lower your weight, obviously, but what that does actually is it lowers the resistance on your body with gravity, yeah. right? And, um, and it increases our strength to weight ratio. Um, when we start to lose weight, we also gain a mental edge as we're winning victories. We become more motivated. And then of course we get the encouragement that we have from our coach and our community and the process of learning, right? And so here's what happens. Here's how the snowball effect works. Um, that when all of these things start to, t to take place, then when I exercise, I actually feel really good about it. I feel a lot better about it. And I know that I'm doing something that's good for myself and it's making a difference. And so I begin to just feel more like it. And then once I start to exercise, that makes me feel better. It helps me to lose weight. It increases my energy. All of these things begin to happen. And what happened for me is it's, it was like the snowball that had been going the wrong direction all those years, started going the other direction. And now, I love exercising, I feel great, and I can feel my body moving toward optimal health. And so, this is a really good time, um, because of those other things that are happening, those are gonna give you an edge, and this is a perfect time to grab a hold of that and say that I'm gonna use this edge that I've got, and I'm gonna start putting myself into motion. All right, so let's look at a little bit of uh, what that looks like. Um, first of all, there's a difference between physical activity and exercise. We're going to talk uh, a little bit about the big difference between the two tonight because sometimes we think of motion and the only thing we can think about is going to a gym and sweating. <laughs> Nobody wants to do that, right? At least in the beginning. So let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, physical activity. This can be integrated into our daily life and it happens anytime your body is in motion, voluntary or involuntary. So when your heart is beating and your lungs are moving in and out, you're burning more calories. 
Now that's um, that's happening involuntarily, but the voluntary part of it is I'm going for a walk with my dog, right? So that daily activity, um, that physical activity can get us moving. Um, physical activity uh, doesn't require special equipment or clothing or anything like that. We're gonna talk a lot about that tonight. The other one is exercise. This is the one we often think about uh, when we think about movement. Planned movement that's more vigorous leads to improvements in our overall fitness. And it's generally done for short periods of time. So this is like something where you actually go in to the gym, right? Um, or whatever. It, and this often does require special equipment, special clothing. You gotta set a time for it. You gotta make it happen. So tonight we're gonna talk about eat, exercise, and meat, exercise. Has anybody ever heard of this stuff before? No. Oh good, all right. Good, I, get, I like to teach new stuff. So eat, exercise, activity, thermogenesis. Thermogenesis, thermogenesis. Does anybody know how that's pronounced? I'm gonna say it either way. I might say it both ways, who cares? All right, so this is planned physical activities we perform in order to increase our energy expenditure and improve our overall fitness, okay? So this is stuff like working out at the gym. This is like going for a run. Uh, this may be your Peloton, treadmill, elliptical machine. Uh, maybe you're engaging calisthenics. You, you're starting to actually put a routine together and do some different things. Um, this might be something like CrossFit, a 10-mile bike ride. Um, these are workouts. These are things that you plan. These are things that you, that you dive into. So what are some other ideas? What are some other... Strength eat? training. Strength training, right? Weightlifting, yep, very good. What else? Cardio. Cardio, yep. Anytime you engage, really get your heart rate up. Dancing. <clears throat> dancing? Oh, well, it depends. Now, if you're doing like dance with, a, with an instructor at the front of the room and all the people in the room are doing the dance, yeah. If you're talking about that, yes. But we're gonna talk about the dancing other dancing. Dancing in the kitchen, don't help. Dancing in the kitchen, <laughs> that's, that's the other kind. The <laughs> we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. All right, what else? That's fine. You guys all get it. You all know what, what these Pickle eat board? exercise. Pickle what? Pickleball, a sport? Uh, yeah, you, you, yeah. I would say that would, that would uh, count. Uh, yep, yeah. because you're actually going. So if you're, if you're involved in a sport, yeah. like sometimes guys have, you know, men's basketball leagues or, you know, something like that. Golf. Golf? I don't know. That Maybe. Without the golf cart. Yeah, I was going to say. They're wearing your own clothes. All right, so we're gonna talk about that more next week. But for the rest of this week, what I wanna talk about is NEAT exercise. That's the non-exercise activity, thermogenesis. Thermogenesis, who cares? All right, <laughs> voluntary and unconscious movements we make as we go about our daily lives by working, doing chores, and the combined effect of all our silly little motions. That's the dancing in the kitchen. See, that's what we were talking about. Okay, Those are silly little motions, I'm sure. That's what Bill told me. <laughs> Just kidding. I can't get any uh, of them to dance with me, so. Oh. Now, let's, let's compare this um, to the eat, because a lot of times we think that going to the gym, unless you're going to the gym, you're not really doing anything. But the truth is that most of the calories that you burn in a given day will not be in the gym. Now, unless you're, you're like an Olympic swimmer and you're training and you're burning 6,000 calories, <laughs> you know, training every day. Um, but for the most part, for the vast majority of us, even people who have a regular exercise or workout routine, our exercise will burn a much smaller portion of our calories than just our all day, every day activities. So the, what we want to talk about tonight is how do we make the best use of this and how do we increase the ability to burn calories and to increase our fitness um, through just our daily kinds of activities. Okay, so the idea is, and if, you, uh, if you've been with us for a while or if you've gone through the, the book, you know that every once in a while, Dr. Anderson puts these little things in here, shows a 24 hour day and kind of how we want it to look. Obviously before bedtime, we don't necessarily want that to be the time that we're doing a lot of movement and exercise. Um, when we talk about sleep and, and energy management, we'll talk more about what do we do during these time periods. 
Of course, we're asleep for eight hours, but for the rest of this, it says neat. All of these say neat. We should be finding any and every way that we can to build movement into our daily lives. And by doing that, uh, we can burn a lot more calories and we can keep ourselves in much better shape. As uh, you're uh, on this weight journey, one of the things uh, that I oftentimes have to talk to people about uh, who are exercising or who think that they're going to need to exercise in order to lose weight is we actually tell our clients to not go to the gym or not um, engage in uh, rigorous physical activity or exercise for the first few weeks because you've depleted your uh, calorie intake quite a bit and we want your body to get used to that. We want to give your body some time to settle into that but then we want to begin to add uh, gradually. But the neat exercise or the neat movement we can do from the very beginning. Those are things that even on our low calorie diet um, we can do uh, right away, right? So we want to do that at first, we want to do that for a while um, and that's kind of a way for us to crawl before we walk and walk before we run because ultimately we're moving down a pathway toward ultimate health. So we want to look to incorporate um, the EAT, the EAT, farther down the road and we want to make a plan and prepare for that. But let's talk about how we can be a neat freak right now, right? How we can uh, incorporate some of that. So uh, let's look at how we can be a neat freak at home. And uh, I don't know if you can see all of those, uh, but we can go through this again. Does anybody know what page it is in your book? 339. 339. So if you've got your book, you can follow along there. Um, there's some ideas. Make your bed, right? Just a few minutes of making your bed can, can make a difference. Uh, manually brush your teeth. I guess that's as opposed to having someone else brush them for <laughs> you or sticking a machine in your mouth. I don't know. Uh, use a, a shaker jar instead of a blender. I, I don't know. Um, wash the dishes instead of just having the dishwasher do it. Uh, use a manual can opener, a manual broom. Use a hand rake for the leaves. That's a good one getting out and just doing those chores around the house. Hide the TV remote. Um, I don't know how much that saves energy or, or creates exercise. Maybe because you and your spouse get in a fight. Yeah, makes you, makes you look around the house for it. So um, you can go out and walk the dog. Uh, you can have a, a, an after dinner walk, some things like that. Um, what are some ideas you guys have? What, what are some of the ways that we can just put ourselves in motion? Maybe ways that in, until we've thought about it, we choose comfort, maybe we choose to lay on the couch uh, for a few hours, but what do we do, what can we do instead? What are some of the things that we can do to incorporate more motion into our daily lives, daily chores at home? Walk to my mailbox instead of picking it up on the way in. Yeah, walk to the mailbox, great idea. Instead of picking it up while you drive, yep. Mm -hmm. I think the make a list. And like have things on there for organi organizing that instead of watching TV, you could be doing this activity to organize a section of your closet or yeah, yeah. Just, you know, like kind of have it to be a goal, part of your, you know, structure. Yeah. I mean, if we do spend an hour a day watching TV or sitting there and we were to decide to reallocate that time to clean out the, the, the garage, the closet, the whatever. Um, you're using energy and you're getting some very important things done. Early. And now's the time, it's spring cleaning. Yes. Yeah, and treats have their sales. That's so right. They need donations, see? Oh, there geez. we go. All right, let's look at ways we could be a neat freak at work. At work. Uh, walking or biking to work, depending on where you work. <laughs> depending on what your commute is. Um, parking far away from the entrance to work, we talked about that. Getting up several times an hour uh, during each hour you are sitting. Using the stairs rather than escalator or elevator. Using the restroom at the other end of the building. So may maybe, you're, maybe you're trying to get out of doing work or maybe you're trying to get exercise, who knows, but you're, yeah. Um, walking when in phone meetings. Uh, getting AirPods or some way to you know, put something in your ears so that you can walk and do things while you're on the phone is a great way to get things done. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're, yeah, if you're in a, in a, yeah. 
Um, walking meetings or, or even standing in a meeting. Uh, standing while on the phone, having a tall, uh, having a tall core when sitting, standing, or walking. And that, that just Sit means straight and sitting walking. straight, yeah. Yeah. shoulders back, stomach in, right? So what are some other things that you can do at work? You can do leg exercises underneath your desk. Yeah. yeah. Maybe get a, um, get one of those balls to sit on. Yeah. That, that causes you to... And straighten up your. I used and to go for a walk at lunch. Go for a walk at lunch. Good. I bring my dog so I can walk for on my breaks. She yep. makes me take a break. So there you go. I have up with Good. All right. Being a neat freak on the go, using a hand basket at the store instead of a cart. Um, park further away. Walk around the mall in bad weather. Around Walmart, we don't have a mall here. Meyer, whatever works for you. Um, engage in outside hobbies on the weekends, giving yourself, you know, getting connected with some things. I'm actually somebody asked me about being on a dragon boat team this year. I'm like, yeah, I think I want to do that. It's been a lot of years since I've done that. Do both outdoor and indoor sports. So you've got something for the summer and the winter. We talked about pickleball or things like that. Um, pickleball is, is more of a, I would say that's a neat, but something like basketball would be more of an eat. I, I think there's more activity or soccer or something like that. So there's a, it's kind of a fine line between those. Um, go for a bike ride, swim at a local pool or at home. Some people have pools at home. Uh, do I hear a pool party coming up? Pool this? party! Woo All right. It's opening tomorrow. Awesome. Awesome. Laps. Um, Go for a walk in the woods or along the lake or the beach. We do live in a town with lots of trails and um, we have a wonderful beach. And even just walking from downtown to the uh, lake or something like that, um, we've got some really great opportunities here in town. So any other, uh, any other ways to be a neat freak out on the go? Anything you guys can think of? Go shopping downtown, park in the parking lot to walk up town instead of trying to find a spot right in front of whatever store you're going Sure, to. yeah. Yeah. I quit trying to carry all the groceries in at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm terrible. I've been terrible about that for years. One trip is all I wanted to take ever. I don't do that so much. Okay. Yeah. It's so make good. make lots of trips on purpose. Okay. Um Maybe coaching a team of some sort, a softball team or a soccer team or a track team or something like that. Um, one of the people that was on the video I watched said they went out and climbed a mountain. So maybe if you're doing vacations, thinking about what are some activities that we can do that cause us to use energy. Looking for places to go for hikes and um, do activities like that outside. Um, at the beach, hit the beach ball around or build a sand castle instead of just laying there, sizzling in the sun like a piece of bacon. Uh, and of course, you know, walking your dogs or if you have other animals, um, doing the things that you have to do to take care of them. So I think a lot of it is just, you know, maybe even thinking about it periodically. What can I do this week? What can I add in this week? What's one more thing I can do this week to just increase my movement a little bit more so that I'm not sitting um, as much? All right. Um, and then they, they, uh, they went through six S's of success, the six neat categories. Uh, and they talk about stance. Sit or stand straight, shoulders back, stomach tight. We talked about that. And right when I said that, everybody sat up a little bit. And then uh, with that standing itself, choosing to stand instead of sit, what activities can you do that maybe, I mean, even if you're, like a lot of times, even if Jen and I do want to watch a TV show at night, I'll be doing exercises while we're doing that. I'll do some push-ups, I'll do some sit-ups right there on the living room floor. And um, usually don't do that when company's over, but uh, <laughs> that would be weird, right? But, um, you know, even choosing to stand or walk around, our son Josiah, he walks. He just walks. He does laps around the house all the time. 
and uh, and it's made a difference. You can see he's slimmer than, than he used to be. Uh, strolling, walk as much as possible with the dog from the furthest parking spot um, to the bathroom at the opposite end of the building, whatever, different ways that you can get up and walk, especially if you have a job that keeps you on your seat a lot. Uh, stairs, taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Samba, this comes back to what you said, turn on the music and dance around your house. Maybe you're gonna clean your house, maybe you're gonna dust, clean the windows, whatever. Put Usually some music on. Usually everybody when I do that. So when I wanna be by myself, I just yeah. dance yeah. around the kitchen. Uh, but even if, you're, even if you're doing household chores, put some music on and that'll actually motivate you to move a little bit faster and, and keep moving like that. I have a radio on 24-7 at my place. It's outside oh, okay. in one of the barns and the reason why we started doing that was to hopefully deter the fox and the coyote, Oh, my friends. You know. Does it work? It, it does to a point, but there are times when Rocky gets into that barn and then keeps the doors open, mm -hmm. and there's times that there'll be a section of music there that's right back to like the 70s. Oh, yeah. So, uh, well, you know all the words. And, uh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get the kids going. That's good. The last S there is switch. Switch off the automation and do things manually. Again, things like washing the dishes instead of doing them in the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. And, um, and things like that. Yep. Push mowing the lawn if you can. Instead of really the, the side yard, the little yard, trying to get the riding lawnmower in there and get every little bit of it on the riding lawnmower, get the push mower. All right. So the neat system is uh, a little bit like the story of the tortoise and the hare. Small daily actions make a big difference. Sometimes we think we've got to get into the gym in order to, um, to really manage our weight and to keep ourselves moving. And the problem is that if, if the goal is that big, I gotta get into the gym in order to do anything, then when that doesn't work, when we're too busy, when things don't work out or whatever, you go, oh, I missed the gym again. I guess I can't exercise. I missed the gym again, I guess I, and it's like, no, we've gotta find, we can find ways. Keep our body moving and install those habits of motion that will help keep our body fit and keep us using those calories. All right, well, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, you don't have to go home or nothing, but I am gonna wrap this up because I gotta wrap up the video. And uh, I always, when I'm editing, I'm like, how am I gonna wrap this up? How am I gonna? So anyway, but thank you for coming out tonight. You guys are so faithful and uh, you're doing a great job for yourselves. And uh, let's see who might be able to bring this. God bless you.